A Tall and Small Collection, Season 2, Chapter 39 Inventor's Exchange Ray hoped his instinct was right. He felt like it was the right thing to do anyway. Theo seemed like a good guy, and, unlike other humans who he saw, Ray thought he could learn a lot from Theo, who was an inventor like him. Ray had questions as well. What else did Theo know about the Littles? Was that why he was so careful with Ray? Also, how did Theo design all of those toys to be the perfect size for a borrower? Was it because of the Littles and his understanding of the series? And how did he make those things? Ray had to know. After much debate, it was decided. Ray needed to go back and talk to Theo. At the very least, he needed to determine if it was a good, safe place for he and Hiro to go do their helping. Since Theo already knew about him, Ray thought it might be easier to convince Theo to pretend not to notice Hiro and himself if they happened to be seen. Ray planned on telling Hiro everything if today went well, but that would depend on what happened. The teenage borrower and Ventor told Ashlyn and Soren both where he was going, and precise instructions on how to get to Theo's apartment. Both of them told him to be careful, and Ashlyn even dared to kiss her finger and tap it on the top of Ray's head, before giving him a nod, telling him that if he wasn't back by dinner, they were coming for him. Then, gathering up a few of his own inventions as well as his essentials, Ray headed off into the walls. His heart was pounding out of his chest, but his features didn't show how nervous he was actually feeling. It was one of those things that Ray had learned to do from Soren. In fact, he had to do it a lot recently. The walls were, as usual, quiet in this part of the apartment complex. It was one thing Ray was grateful for, since it was no longer a secret that he and his family were friends with Ashlyn, a human. Few dared to venture this far. It meant that there were less chances of being asked questions or targeted like before. Though, Ray never dropped his guard as he continued walking along the path he was familiarizing himself with now, careful to make the right amount of lefts and rights to go into Theo's room, not the little sister's room, Bella. In what felt like record time, he was there standing in front of the electrical cover he slipped through after his encounter with Theo. The thought of someone other than Ashlyn or Sam holding him made him shudder, but at least Theo had been considerate and gentle. Ray shook his head. He couldn't think about that now. What he needed was a clear head and a steady hand. Taking another quick breath, he pushed open the cover and slipped out into Theo's bedroom. The moment he did, he saw Theo's mobile chair sitting at the same desk where he was before. Ray crept to the very front of the piece of furniture and peered out cautiously, keeping his hook firmly in his left hand and pin in his right. Sure enough, Theo had his back turned and was working at his desk. Also, thankfully, the door was closed and locked. Perfect. Ray had no idea what Theo was doing but what mattered was that his attention was elsewhere. With caution, Ray spotted a fair amount of shelves and wires he could use to get up onto the top shelf just out of reach from Theo, while also being seen and heard. It took little to no time for Ray to ascend the side of the cabinet, trying out his new hooked boots for climbing, and dart from behind figurine to figurine, the bedspread, which was some kind of space-themed, was trickier to traverse given that the hooks on the edges of Ray's boots didn't retract back like they should have. He'd have to work on those later. Still, it didn't stop him from shimmying over past the line of trim and up the bookshelves until he reached the place where he wanted to on the shelves above the desk. It was just above eye level for Theo which was a bit closer than Ray was hoping, but he was in no mood to turn back and forget his mission. He had questions that needed answering. 
the teenage borrower crouched and peered over the ledge to watch what Theo was doing, and he suddenly found himself entranced. There were two odd boxes on Theo's desk, and another on a side table beside his desk, that were making odd whirring sounds. A spool of what looked like thick blue line fed into the boxes. Theo was typing away at his computer, scrolling and clicking from time to time, until he gave a grin and nodded. With a few more clicks, the third machine clicked into action, spinning and whirring like the others. Another buzzed and stopped, which made Theo smile. Ray watched with utter fascination as Theo reached into the machine after opening the door and pulled out what looked like a bed frame that would fit him perfectly. It had drawer slots on both sides and even a place to hang things like hooks and line off of the edge. Did that thing come from the machine? Ray had to know. He breathed in deeply and stood to his full height, forcing himself to walk calmly across the shelf until he was almost directly in front of Theo. Ray felt Theo's eyes on him the moment they flicked up. Ray watched Theo do a double take, glancing up at the first sound, and then glancing up again to see Ray boldly walking out beside various books and contraptions. Ray stopped in front of him and steeled his nerves as he turned and faced Theo, staring into his keen blue eyes. Ray's own pale blue ones undoubtedly showed he was mildly unnerved, but Ray refused to retreat. Instead, he kept his body relaxed while keeping his hand on the edge of his pin. Theo's expression changed rapidly from confusion to curiosity, and then amusement. Hey there, little guy, said Theo, glancing over toward the door that was shut and latched, as if he wanted to make sure he wasn't going to be disturbed while he was talking with Ray. Theo turned his eyes back to Ray, who felt like his heart was pounding harder, though not faster, thankfully. I didn't think I'd be seeing you again. What's up? Do you need help with something? Ray had been working himself up all day to do this, accounting for everything except for one major thing. How he was going to initially address Theo. Should he thank him, start asking questions, lay down the rules like Soren did when he first met Ashlyn? Ray decided that, first and foremost, he needed to express gratitude. Theo had kept him safe when his sister found him in her dollhouse, and then he let him go without question. His fascination with these odd devices could wait to be second. I wanted to say thank you, said Ray, swallowing dryly. You didn't have to cover for, for my blunder, and you made sure I wasn't hurt, so thanks. Ray tried speaking up as loud as he dared but it still sounded so small compared to how his voice sounded when he talked to Ashlyn. Were his nerves really that much on edge? Yeah, dude, nodded Theo, as he set down the bed frame in his hands onto the desk. No problem whatsoever. Anytime. Is that all? Wait, you're not here because of some life debt thing, are you? Like, your family won't let you come back because I saw you until you do something heroic for me? Eh, what? Asked Ray, feeling his brow instinctually furrow in confusion. But he also saw an opportunity to get some of his questions answered. No, that isn't it. We don't have life debt rules or anything like that, but we do have other rules. Which I guess brings me to a question I wanted to ask you. How do you know about the rules? Is it because of that thing you said about littles? What? Oh, yeah, said Theo as he leaned back into his mobile chair, which Ray still found curious. In the Littles book series, littles aren't supposed to talk to people and have tails and live in the walls and such. I noticed you don't have a tail, though. Sorry if this is too personal, but you're not a little, <laughs> are you? Ray didn't want to tell Theo what he was, or about the whole of Borrower Society. This was supposed to be a game of twenty questions for Theo, not him. 
Still, it couldn't hurt to share a little about himself. No, I'm not a little. I'm small, but not that, stated Ray. And I'm not supposed to talk about it, so could I ask you something different instead, please? Stunned fascination was the closest thing Ray could describe when it came to Theo's facial expressions. Sure, having a conversation with a four-inch tall person didn't happen every day, but it still made Ray squirm a little. It made him feel small, like he was something to be fascinated with, rather than just being treated like a person. Um, yeah, sure, go ahead, bud, what's up? Asked Theo. Ray nodded a couple of times, filing through what he wanted to ask first. All right, I have a few questions, if you don't mind. First question is about Littles. How do you know about them? Have you ever seen anyone like that? And is that why you seem to be completely at ease talking to me? Theo leaned back in his chair again, wheeling back a little bit as he chuckled lightly. Ray initially felt himself bristle as he looked at Theo, but seeing the look on the human teen's face told Ray he wasn't being laughed at. That is definitely not one question, but I get why you clustered them together, grinned Theo. He kept his voice low, undoubtedly because the other humans were home, but it was still clear enough for Ray to hear clearly. First part, I know about littles because of the storybooks. My mom used to read them to me, and I always thought the concept was fascinating. Part two... I have never met a little before, hence why I thought you were one who just didn't have a tail. Part three, I guess that definitely helped. But honestly, you just look like a smaller human, so I guess I'm subconsciously talking to you like one. That answer everything for question series one. Ray nodded, liking how direct Theo was speaking to him. It was a lot of good information all at once, and he definitely seemed patient in asking his own questions. Ray could see the human was just as curious as Ray, but refrained from bargaining for time to ask his own questions. Whatever these books said about littles and the rules was obviously accurate. Did that mean someone met a borrower and decided to call them something different to keep the secret, while also telling others about people who lived in the walls? Ray suspected he would never know the answer, but it certainly made him think about how many people might be aware of the borrower's secret without even knowing it. Ray snapped out of his temporary stupor and looked down into Theo's keen blue eyes once again. He was waiting patiently for Ray's response. Um, yes, that did answer those questions. Thank you, stated Ray. Next set, then, if that's all right. Fire away, grinned Theo, gesturing with his hands for Ray to continue. All right, next questions are about your sister and those toys of hers. Did you design them with Littles in mind, or does she have toys that happen to be this size? Asked Ray, gesturing to himself. And how are you making them? Is it those box things on your desk? Theo's eyes brightened at Ray's question gleaming with some mix of pride and some other emotion. Great question. Well, first, did you like the designs? I mean, I assume you saw them, right? Were they alright? Did you try opening the drawers or anything? Or were they too difficult to open because of weight and such? Asked Thea. Ray thought about his time in the dollhouse. Admittedly, he had not tried to open any of the drawers or cabinets, he was afraid it might be noticeable if he couldn't get the thing closed again. Still, it was impressively made. Everything felt custom, like it was meant to fit a borrower perfectly. It also felt like, as Ray was walking through the dollhouse, that everything was accounted for. He remembered there was a hook stand by the door, and the hinges were perfectly sized. It was like a house was made for someone like him. It felt like he was human-sized, in a normal house, 
even though the colors and paint were done by a kid younger than him. I, I didn't try to open anything. I didn't want to possibly leave evidence that I was there. Still, everything looked and felt precise, like it was measured perfectly by someone like me, said Ray. Theo raised his fist in a momentary cheer and even did a thing called a wheelie in his chair. Ray knew the look as one of triumph. Evidently, this was exactly what Theo wanted to hear. Uh, sorry, apologized Theo, as he looked back up into Ray's face and saw his momentary confusion. I nerd out over my projects when they work. No, it's fine. I know the feeling, said Ray, feeling himself smile slightly. Was this how Hiro felt with Sam? Kindred spirits who had the same interests. Oh, you're an inventor too? Asked Theo, but he raised his finger to stop Ray from answering before he even began. Wait, answering your questions first. I technically didn't design them with Littles in mind, but her toys and dolls do fit the general description, height and so forth, of a little, if that makes sense. It does, agreed Ray. A lot of kid toys could be used for a borrower. Ray remembered some of their early plates and tools being borrowed from doll houses and toy rooms back at their old home. His mom and dad even found some clothes like jackets for winter and blankets from doll houses and toy storage. Anyway, continued Theo, not noticing Ray's momentary reminiscing. I did design some of the things on my own using some 3D programs here on my tablet and computer, but some of the designs came from this website I found called Tay Models. Evidently, the guy is an engineer, architect kind of guy and started making 3D virtual models with a friend, who I think is into design? Anyway, they started this business and are making loads of money selling these models and the plans to make them for yourself. For a brief moment, Ray had thought about the creators of Tay Models. An engineer and a designer? How would an engineer and a designer know about how deep to make a wall hook, the depth of a fishing hook, and how it would hang on a wall isn't something a normal person would think about. Ray wondered quietly, keeping his thoughts to himself, for a few more moments before daring to peer over the ledge at the boxes that were still whirring away. He spotted that odd cord going into the machine, the distinct gray color catching his eye. And is that how you make them? asked Gray as he pointed to the boxes below. Huh? Oh, yeah. They're called 3D printers. They take an image from my computer and turn it into something physical. The trick to printing is to think about what you're making in all different angles. Like, you know a drawer has to fit into the cabinet. But is it on a track? Or do you have a base on the inside for the cabinet? Do you have the right measurements for the inside? That sort of thing. Do you want to check it out? Get closer, I mean, said Theo, placing his hands on the wheels of his chair and rolling backward a little way from the desk. Ray had to admit that his curiosity was piqued. He had never heard of these things, and the thought of coming up with something with a tube of plastic was intriguing. Going to check, however, and he would have to get closer to Theo, standing on the desk within arm's reach of the human. Ray paid close attention to Theo's tone and the words he used. In his mind, Ray thought Theo sounded just as excited, but not about him, though, about showing off the machines and showcasing his work. It would be like one true adventure talking to another, and this was exactly something that intrigued Ray. Sure, borrowers were inventors and MacGyvers by necessity, but to really think outside of the box and put something together that wasn't meant to be put together was at the heart of what Ray was doing. It took only moments, even though it felt like longer, but Ray found himself nodding as he looked Theo in the eye. I would, if you don't mind, 
said the inventive teen. Theo smiled and once again wheeled his chair back ever so slightly to give Ray more room. Most likely so the borrower would feel comfortable. This action confirmed Ray's instincts, so he pulled out his hook from his belt, secured it to the ledge of the shelf, and slid down the line quickly at a controlled descent. Ray could feel Theo's eyes on him, but he put that thought on the back burner as he landed firmly and flicked the line to knock the hook loose. For an added flare, he managed to snag the hook out of the air, stepping surely where it was going to fall. Wow, that's impressive, complimented Theo as he watched. Ray felt himself beam just a little with pride as he flashed a toothless smile at the human mere feet away from him. Admittedly, he wasn't as nervous as he thought he would be, probably because he was excited and fascinated with Theo's various contraptions and his high alert was keeping him completely aware of his surroundings. Thanks, he said as he walked closer to the large boxes and tiptoed to watch them work. Sure enough, there was a little nozzle feeding the plastic into a box and then into a very thin funnel where it looked like it was tracing the same thing over and over again. Ray stepped up to the other box and noticed the same thing. Fascinating. Ray, with his curiosity flaring stronger than before, walked over to the tablet and examined the screen, seeing that the design was a box-like device that looked like a drawer. It was a complete guess, but the bar were teen suspicions were that the machines were tracing the outlines of these boxes. Ah, you see the design? said Theo. Ray whipped around and saw Theo had leaned back in his wheeled chair to watch as Ray examined his workstation. Taking a breath, Ray nodded. Yeah, and I have to say I'm impressed, said Ray, and he genuinely was. Theo had three of these machines going simultaneously so he could expedite productivity. He was also working with items three-dimensionally before he could even physically work with them, hold them in his hands. This was far beyond Ray's realm of understanding. Yeah? Smiled Theo. Well, good. Now, I don't want to be insulting or anything, but do you understand how the program and those machines work? I'd be happy to teach you. Ray looked back at the program and then to the machines. This was beyond his skills, but he wanted to learn. He craved it. If he could simply use this machine to get the exact parts he needed, some of his designs were attainable. Ray decided to take the chance. If you'd be willing to teach, I'm willing to learn, said Ray. Theo glanced down at his chair and then to the desk, silently asking if he could approach, to which Ray nodded while keeping track of his exits. He trusted Theo, but old habits died hard. It took a moment for Ray as he breathed deeply and kept himself calm as Theo rolled forward and placed his hands on the desk near the screen where Ray was. Okay, crash course of 3D printing. Ready? Yes. From there, Ray found himself completely enthralled in Theo's lessons. Ray learned about the tablet and how the application, or app, worked. He learned how to program and download different models and watched in utter fascination as a simple touch of his hand could activate and spin the model around so he could examine every angle of it before it was even printed. Theo then explained about the machine and how everything was hooked up. He explained that the filament was essentially melted and reshaped using the nozzle, tracing along the base so it could be removed once the project was complete. Ray even had enough time to practice making his own design before there came a knock at the door. Ray practically jumped out of his skin as he heard the sound of three loud, harsh knocks on the door. The knob rattled, making his body shiver as a booming voice sounded from the other side. Say ho! What are you doing in there? The words were slurred and obviously from a much older bigger person. Hide, hissed Theo 
without hesitation as he redirected his wheeled chair toward the door. Ray wasted no time in ducking behind one of the machines, and then back behind the desk where he slipped in between the wall and the wood, sliding down halfway so he was underneath of the desk where Theo's legs usually were. Just working, Dad, called Theo, once he saw Ray was out of sight. The door practically burst off of its hinges the moment the lock was undone from the other side, using a special key. Theo wheeled back ever so slightly, but held firm, keeping his chin high. I don't know who you're talking to. Theo's dad demanded, thundering into the room. It's just a YouTube video I'm prepping for explaining my work. Now, will you please... Let me work. I haven't bothered you. Ray didn't see it, but he heard a harsh slap. Don't lie to me, boy, roared Theo's father. And what about Bells? You're getting her from the bus or what? <sighs> I'm not lying. And yes, I'll get her from the bus. Are we done now? Demanded Theo, trying to keep his tone even despite his wavering voice. We're done when I, when I say we're done, snarled the man as he took a step forward. Ray watched the wheeled chair tip and fall to the ground as Theo was practically thrown from it onto the floor. Theo crashed to the ground and glanced under the desk where he spotted Ray, wide-eyed and terrified, but also furious in his own way. How dare a father treat their son like this? Ray, biting his tongue watched as the man left the room and slammed the door behind him. Immediately, he let himself drop to the floor and ran out from under cover, right up to the human boy, now feeling no fear toward Theo. Are you all right? asked Ray, looking around and feeling helpless to get Theo back up into his chair. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm all right, groaned Theo, keeping his voice low this time as he pushed himself carefully up onto one elbow. Sorry, you had to see that. He's not usually this agitated so early in the day. You mean he does this a lot? Asked Ray. Theo, wincing, managed to push himself up as he fought with the chair, with wheels back upright. Yeah. I try to make sure Bells doesn't see it or bother him. I can't wait to turn 18 and get out of here with her. I've already submitted everything and sent the paperwork, but we have to lay low until then, stated Theo. In all reality, this is better. All I need to do is take some extra pictures and file the report with my attorney, so it strengthens my case at any rate. Ray had no idea what to think. Theo sounded so detached and factual about the whole thing, but it sounded serious. What he was saying. Lawyers? Paperwork? Cases? It was nothing compared to the revelation that Theo was now manually hoisting himself up into the wheeled chair, his legs dragging behind him. Ray, so shocked by the scene, took a few steps backwards. Did he do that? Are your legs so you can't use them? Asked Ray. He realized the question was insensitive and that he just blurted it out. But he wanted, needed to know now. At this, Theo actually chuckled as he continued to situate himself in the chair. No, he didn't do this. It was, well, long story short, it was a car accident. I tweaked my back after I got Bells out of the car. Evidently, I shouldn't have been moving, but, well, the adrenaline kept me from feeling my injuries until it was too late, muttered Theo who now, for the first time, wasn't all smiles and fascination. I'm trying to get prosthetics, which is why I'm saving money for my various printing projects to buy myself a pair. But uh, that'll be a long way away. Wow, mumbled Ray, staring up at Theo. I had no idea. To Ray, a human's life usually seemed so easy. They had countless food sources and the ability to travel vast distances. Everything seemed so effortless. It was hard to believe a human could have a bad day. It was hard to believe that such horrendous accidents could happen, 
and that humans didn't have perfect alternatives to make everything all right. Well, there was probably more to it than all that. Humans had their politics and rules that Ray didn't understand. Instead, Ray could only mutter, I'm sorry, again. Mm, don't be. I'll be glad when the time comes to leave. Anyway, do you mind if I bother you for something? Asked Theo. It was obvious he wanted to change the subject, so Ray decided to humor Theo. After all, he had spent time and taught him about the application and 3D printing. Sure, what is it? Asked Ray, bracing himself for Theo's request. Well, it looks like you have some inventions there on your back and at your sides. If it's not too much to ask, maybe I could ask you about them. Tell me about your designs and stuff. I mean, it's absolutely fascinating. You don't have the same tools that I do. At least I don't think you do. I'd be interested to know how you made those designs. What they do and what you use for tools, stated Theo. A true inventor to the end. Ray nodded and looked back up to the desk. He thought about using his emergency belay device, but then he heard Theo's voice. Do you want a hand up? Ray, usually, would politely decline, but given the circumstances, it seemed appropriate. If you don't mind, smiled Ray. Thanks. It was odd, but Ray felt little to no fear when he stepped onto Theo's fingertips and was lifted up onto the arm of the wheelchair, and then onto the desk. From there, Ray went into his own descriptions of his inventions and how they operated. Theo absorbed every word, actually taking notes on the design and asking minimal questions until Ray explained how everything was designed. Absolutely amazing, breathed Theo. Thanks. You're not so bad yourself, grinned Ray. As Theo glanced at the clock, he sighed. Well, I'm sorry to cut our time short, but I need to go and get to my sister. She'll be home soon, said Theo. But promise me we'll get a chance to talk like this again. This was nice. Agreed. Though I'll have to see when I can come back. Soon, I hope, said Ray, meaning it. It was nice to have someone on the same crazed inventing mindset like him. With that, Ray descended down the line and vanished into the walls. He was practically buzzing with excitement, wanting to go back sooner than later, but knew the parameters. Besides, he had to go and talk to a certain hero about a human who needed their help.